Hello, and welcome to The Last Step, another edition. So I woke up today and wasn't sure what the show would be about. Um, as you guys know, I usually have Frank on the show, and but I felt quite, quite peaceful. I didn't have, you know, any thoughts of what the show would be about at that point. And Frank was supposed to be on. He was in Mallorca, Spain, and... Yeah, he ended up getting stuck on a high mountain road, so he won't be with us today. He's out there with Lisa. But there was something about the morning, just not having any pressure or... Could I see gallery view? Uh, yeah, so I can see everyone there. Yeah, so there wasn't this pressure about the show, or, and I thought, oh, maybe it's because I'm doing these other shows in the morning and I'm getting used to it or whatever. But there was something, uh, something else going on, and I got into the shower and... As I got into the shower, I usually, you know, hear some thoughts as I'm relaxed in the shower because I don't have anything else coming to me. And I heard that uh, Christmas carol, which was uh, Let It Snow, but I was singing it, but I was singing it. It's pretty cool because I only watched the beginning of Ricky's show, but it's about that letting go of control. And I started singing, uh, The weather outside is frightful, but the skies are so delightful. And if you got no place to go, let it go, let it go, let it go. And it was like this idea of letting go of control for me, which has been, I'm leaving in a few days to go to Miami to the Mystic Writing Retreat and a lot of the areas that I've been over here or using for uh, mind training, I have to hand them over. And a lot of communications have been going on and my lesson as well as most of the people around has been direct communication and practicing that and seeing where there's resistances and things around those direct communications. And as I passed off all my areas, I could see myself wanting to hang on or make sure th certain things happened and just really watching my own patterns with that. And it was funny, I had a call with my father this morning who I'm going to see in New Orleans. Um, I'm stopping there for two days before I go to Miami. And it's a Sunday morning and I called and my mother said, oh, he might be at the office. And I said, Oh, is that not like I always used to perceive my father as like holding on to all this stuff and keeping it all in mind? And I'm like, now I could see they're all my own patterns. And I was like, oh, I need to let go of all my areas before I leave to Miami. <laughs> it was like, so we've been using these things and even with the team here and to get in touch with this direct communication. And I thought about it. It was like, so then I was thinking about the show and what I was going to do and what was present. I went and joined with Jason this morning and we were talking about just things that were going on, and there's Jason. Yeah. Got to zoom out a little bit, Nicholas. Yeah. So there's this, um, we, we joined this morning, and we were just talking about what was present for me and for him and everything, and I was like, oh, I got to have Jason on the show. It was like, and this at this time, I still thought Frank was going to be on the show. I didn't know Spirit was going to put him on a high country road with uh, Elisa, so... I was like, oh, that is what's present for me, too. And that's always the prayer of, like, get into the show and see what's present for us and, like, what's going on, as, you know, Ricky just demonstrated so beautifully with her direct communication there. So it was like, okay. So I left, uh, left his room and then found out, and I was like, well, how does that relate to The Last Step? I've always wanted Jason to be on the show, and it was always like, how do I relate that to The Last Step? He actually had some experience with 12 Steps as a family member was in, in a program, and... And I said, well, what is the last step actually? You know, in the course, the last step is really talking about an experience of our direct communication with, with our source. And I was like, okay, I can tie together there. But it was really just a way to bring Jason on so we could talk about, yeah, these lessons that I certainly have been learning and realizing that everything, even as, I'm, as of this morning, seeing mm -hmm. like talking with Jay, Jason, actually for those people that are in 12 Steps that watch my show, Jason would be the closest thing I have to a sponsor right now, like that I go to, you know, with anything that's on my mind or, hey, what are you seeing? Or, you know, and this morning it was something about some projects that we use as a backdrop. And I'm like, well, I communicated this, but it didn't, you know, it didn't happen. So what do I do now? Like, it's always this idea of I don't, you know, going over these sections of the course, the correction of error. Like, I don't want to point out error in my brother, but once we have the shared agreement with one another to, to actually heal our minds, it's like there's so many little patterns and actually compromises and deferrals and all this stuff that happened that it's like, 
we have this commitment to healing that I actually, yeah, go to Jason with a lot of that. <laughs> We've been finding out, I've been finding out a lot about myself and my own control patterns and actually, yeah, for some reason, always when I get to this point, this, the lesson of um, it can be but my own gratitude I earn always comes to me because it's always like if I'm giving something, I'm expecting it to be fouled or something, but it's really only for me. I'm like just delivering the message or whatever it is, and I have to actually remember that mm. more often. So it's good to have you on the show. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was funny because both of us made a, well, the whole car, Kirsten, Suzanne, nah. Um, Jeffrey and I went out for dinner last night and on the way over there we were expressing that yeah there's these communications that are going out but the way that it's coming back in terms of either follow through or being heard is very mm. different than the way that we're expressing it so we just made a prayer out in the car okay show us show us what's going on deeper Holy Spirit and you can see this picture here with the the uh, God and man Leonardo the like Da Vinci, I think, yeah. painted that on the Sistine Chapel, and it's really God and man. And you could, I can make room there. You could see that right here would be the Holy Spirit. If I can line it up, reverse it, right, right there. there. You know, the Holy Spirit is the bridge to communication, so that you can go up the rungs of the ladder. And so we put the prayer out, and then this morning I just woke up with this, like a deep feeling of the answer, and. Mm. Jeffrey and I tried to talk about it this morning, but we couldn't. We were like, okay, it must be. We thought it was for my show, but it's yeah. for this show. And maybe I could just start to yeah. convey that because we, in the community, we've really been focusing on this communication and saying everything. And I've actually got some quotes from the course that I was going to play on my next show that only very few can hear God's voice at all. And even they cannot communicate his messages directly through the Spirit which gave them. They need a medium through which communication becomes possible to those who do not realize that they are Spirit. A body they can see, a voice they understand and listen to, without the mm. fear the truth would encounter in them. Do not forget the truth can come only where it is welcomed without fear. So do God's teachers need a body, for their unity could not be recognized directly. So I love that, even that last line, because he says that, you know, to deny that there's a body is a particularly inappropriate use of denial. denial right. So he's basically saying, since that's the case, then, you know, God's teachers need a body so that they can communicate the lesson. Now these le next two lines were what Jeffrey and I were relating to this morning or next two paragraphs. You have a role in the atonement which I, Jesus, will dictate to you. Ask me which miracles you should perform. This spares you needless effort because you will be acting under direct communication. Mm. The impersonal nature of the miracle is an essential ingredient because it enables me to direct its application and under my guidance, miracles lead to the highly personal experience of revelation. Mm. A guide does not control, but he does direct, mm. leaving it up to you to follow. So that, those course quotes were the best I could find to convey this experience. Like we, we, we have to communicate. We have to keep communicating because that's the only function of the body. That's the only function of why we seem to be here, to be able to leave the dream mm. of separation. And, and in that communication, if there's any sense of a somebody else that doesn't person. follow or listen yeah. or a person then we have taken that message personally. And he just said the impersonal nature of the miracle yeah. communication is an essential ingredient. So, so in that communication, we get to see where we still, still. take things yeah. personal. So it's literally just for us. Yeah. It's not. That's how, that's how I was saying Andy the other day. It's like the message is actually for me. It's like staying yeah. in that place. It's just not for somebody else necessarily to, to even follow. To follow. Yeah. And in that, it's like, you get to see that whether people listen or don't listen, or hear or, or don't hear, the script is written. And it's, you really don't have control. Communication isn't so you can control things. Right. The communication is so you can see where, where you have control. Still is, yeah. 
And uh, you get into this experience where the script is written, which is yeah. everything's done and you're happy. So it was just like, it all kind of flashed through. Yeah, me. <laughs> that was it. We were trying to explain yeah. it this morning. I'm like, and I had a dream about this. It was like, we went to a restaurant and there was like tables and a waiter. I'm like, I can't really quite explain it, but it's got something to do with the certain people that we were doing stuff with. And it feels like this. And I couldn't like convey it. And it's like, I'm even thinking about yesterday because what I was just explaining about starting to hand over some of the areas and forgetting about how much stuff I keep in my mind and I sat down with the studio crew here and I just like literally dates and numbers and I just started like sharing I felt amazing it was like this experience of mm -hmm. because there was also that yeah. moment of like yeah. I'm not I'm gonna be gone like I'm leaving yeah. and you guys got it and it was like oh and it, like I literally had that feeling of it's not yeah there's an expectation or a attachment to it yeah so this encourages us to do more now yeah because it's not personal we're just communicating more and yeah. more and more yeah, that's always the thing, especially with the harder or seemingly harder direct communications where, yeah, the attachment, believe I can hurt, or if I have to tell someone, hey, you did it wrong, or that was where I got caught up in that correction of the error. I don't want to point out error, but if I'm actually, that means I'm seeing it as error. Mm -hmm. But if I can actually just speak to it like it's not error and overlook that and be like, hey, we need to mm -hmm. try this, and that's been, yeah, even my practice deeper. So. Mm. Yeah, to direct and not control. Yeah. yeah. Actually, that was kind of fun last night because we... Kirsten's here, and so we went out, the four of us, and the first thing that happened when we get in the car is we, <laughs> the flag. we see this flag, I guess it's Patton Yeah. Day. It's dark out, and somebody says it's the, the flag. Flag's, the flag's at half-mast. And I was like, no, it's not. No, it it's looks so high. <laughs> There's no way that's half-mast. That means it's double <laughs> at height. And Kirsten's like, yes, it is. Jeffrey's like, yes, it is. I'm like, no. <laughs> and Kirsten's like, turn around. We're going to go. They're gonna go look at this. And I was like, no, no, no. Let's we got baked potato waiting. Let's uh, let's go to the, <laughs> the thing. But the whole night was like a series of these. Yeah. Kristen would say something, and I would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's exactly what I was talking about. Yeah. Just, doesn't feel like the same, <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> it's like on the surface, and even when we got back in the car, put on the heat because it's getting winter here right now. And I said, if you hit the AC button. <laughs> <laughs> if you hit the AC button, it'll warm up the car faster. And she's like, is this one of your engineering yeah. ideas? I said, no, I, I literally learned this. You know, in school, air conditioning means conditioning the air. So let's condition it hotter. And I had a hard time with that one. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. Here, let me prove it to you. <laughs> so there's a, like back and forth. And they tried my way and still cold air. And then they put it to their way and then whatever, the yeah. heat came eventually. And, but the whole thing was like... It wasn't like, personal. It wasn't <laughs> personal. <laughs> we were just having so much fun, like, almost like we're all old married couples that yeah. it doesn't matter what you say on the surface, the love underneath it. Because mm -hmm. there is no agreement in form anyways. So, yeah. I don't know how that fits in with your show, but it was really fun. Oh, it does. I want to <laughs> be able to talk about everything like we're talking about the heat <laughs> in the car. It was like, yeah. Yeah, I noticed. Uh, yeah. yeah, even there's something that I was noticing in my patterns, which was that deferral, like because I'm avoiding communication because there's some kind of fear of. Yeah, and for me it was perceiving. Sometimes it would be you or cursed in that you would be upset. And mm -hmm. so I had to do something. And this is a pattern in my mind from my life, actually. Like, you know, I always share, and I think my mother's even watching today. <laughs> it was always this idea of my father, you know, don't upset your mother. So I'd actually do things. And then my mother, mother was always upset. So it was a difficult situation <laughs> to be in. <laughs> so it was like, but always trying to, yeah, please, or make sure that I'm not, and then avoiding something to do that. And sometimes it would be taking things on myself that aren't for me and avoiding the communication. Mm -hmm. And I've mm -hmm. noticed recently as we've been talking here at the house, it's like anytime I'm actually uncomfortable or there's something, it's, there's something I'm not communicating, mm -hmm. whether it's, hey, this isn't for me or mm -hmm. I need to do this or I forgot to, or something. There's always something there that when I do mm -hmm. make that communication, it's always, there's some kind of release and it's, mm -hmm. I just need to pause in those moments and like, okay, who is it? Who do I need to go towards? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's almost like, because you know, you have this tremendous amount of energy and willingness. Mm. And there can be this part of the mind that's like, I don't want to take 
this on because either I might mess it up or I'm going to have to do something. And you're already so fully used, right? Right. So you get these assignments either from Kirsten or from me. And immediately this pressure or fear comes up. And yet, if you can just remember, I'm a communication overseer. My only That's job it. is to communicate. Right. But instead, the default is, instead of I need do nothing, I need do everything. Yeah. And there's a value I find in it. By doing it, I'm somehow going to yeah. impress or <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make sure that it happens correctly because mm -hmm. there's something in my mind that, and this is another one that I've always had, like, if I do it, it's easier than communicating with someone else to do it because I know it'll get done right, right. And all those things. And it's like, yeah, so it's staggering at times. <laughs> but I felt it because it was even with that one that came in, it was like this immediate. And I noticed it with Kirsten more because there was something different than I've been practicing with you. And it was like, whoa, there's a need to please or whatever it is. It was like, and then really the answer is always just to communicate. And then I saw where I kind of missed those communications, so to speak. So. Yeah, get plenty of opportunities to uh, see where this happens <laughs> each day. So, yeah, it's beautiful. Hmm. Did you have another quote? Well, here's the one you liked, which was the Holy Spirit who leads to God translate communication into being. Hmm. The Holy Spirit sees the body only <clears throat> as a means of communication. And because communicating is sharing, it becomes communion. So I, I think that's why we, as a community, we have this emphasis on no private thoughts. It's, it's not so much the private thoughts, it's, that it's the communication function of, of not holding back to get in that vibe where you're eventually able to just communicate the Spirit. Yeah. And you, you're just communicating the Spirit. You're aligned with the Spirit. That's your whole mind. It takes over and it just molds you yeah. into communion. That's why our path is so different than a contemplative path or a, I don't know what the other ones are, but right. because we, we, we have a stepping stone approach to get merged. He said the purpose is the same with those others, but, right. but we save time by communicating into yeah. our Father. It blows me away sometimes when I actually wake up and I realize, especially now stepping into this overseer's, you know, position, and it's like, and then I see what you do and have done, and then I'm like, I'm in, I'm in communication all day. Like it's from meeting to meeting, mm -hmm. and it's like so that you're never actually out of that, that element. It's like, and then seeing that that what you just said, there's something in that that communication is sharing, because I notice for myself even what I was just speaking to a little, there's some kind of value about knowing things that others don't know or. Like even in this studio, mm -hmm. when I started it, it was like I'd, my value is built up like in that role. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, when I share it, what's that mean about me? Mm -hmm. So then I noticed the opposite. When I shared all the stuff that I had in my mind, it was like, oh, wow, that feels amazing. Like I'm not taking anything on or, yeah, that's, that's the gift. Yeah. It's even hard to switch roles. Like now you're on camera, but you're still yeah. like directing. There still are cameras, yeah. Like. <laughs> Pan out, <laughs> fade. <laughs> yeah, I'm still working on that. <laughs> mm. Mm, yeah, I guess <clears throat> that's going to be interesting even on this, even communicating with my parents and going on this retreat and like we're going on a writing retreat with Kirsten and Jackie in Miami for four or five days and I'm going back home and it's like even to stay in that prayer of where my communications need to be because I'm still going to be in this communications overseer and like seeing the even this new thing that we have we have this we have this program called base camp that we use to communicate about our projects and everything else and we just started asking this question on base camp to our whole community so everyone on different days answers the question Basically, how are you feeling? Like, how are you feeling? And like, just even noticing how connected I can feel with the rest of the community, just by knowing like little mm -hmm. things. Like, it's like amazing. That's that mm -hmm. communication and sharing that mm -hmm. keeps me feel mm -hmm. feel connected. Like that was your idea, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Because yeah. <clears throat> I get requests every day. Like, okay, who's available to do this? Who's who's inspired? Who's passionate? And I read through these beautiful little notes every day. People are in our community are sharing where they're at and I can say, oh, this one's inspired and has space or this one, this one's going down. They, 
they need some alone time or whatever, you know. Yeah. It's so helpful. <sighs> I didn't know what to expect for this show. <laughs> I literally had like a whole plan with Frank and a seeming plan, but Frank was having some thoughts of there's fires in, in California and some are approaching his ranch and all this. And he had to let his horses go. Yeah, yeah, he let, or yeah, he got them shipped out. And uh -huh. So I was like, okay, I had all these quotes from the course and then this all came in, so it's all new. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, there's the one thing that's been actually in my mind most recently because I started doing this morning show and in the morning show I just pretty much share what I do for a routine in the morning and the other day that line from uh, I think it's fear and conflict section that it's about um, mind wandering and so it's like always remembering that where is my mind wandering and what I found amazing this time when I read it it was like you know I am much too tolerant of a wandering mind and passively condoning my mind's miscreations and then it says uh, you know the practice the particular results do not matter but the fundamental error does and the correction is always the same before you decide what to do, before you decide to, or choose to do anything, be sure that you are asking me, you know. And then the final line says, if you are certain of this, you will feel no, you will feel no fear. fear. And I realize now, like when I read that line, I was like, oh my God, that's the benefit. How can you ever be certain but to be able to communicate <laughs> like how we do it here? It's the same as a 12-step with a sponsor, mm -hmm. but that's all we do is like, never making these decisions ourselves, and mm -hmm. so I even saw in that little scenario that played out yesterday or the day before I could see oh I made a decision here to not what we call join which is just hey are you hearing the same thing as me should we bring this to the overseers and talk about it maybe someone else has some information that would actually take it I took it on as my own so it was like and I saw those points but like for some reason when I read that line again I was like oh but see these these are the conditions like underneath. This is why this is totally last step is I just saw a movie recently, it's not coming to me, but even Ricky just talked about Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Where at one point in the movie he feels so lonely and he's about to go drink a drink and one of his friends says, You're an alcoholic and the other one says, No, no, you're not an alcoholic. You just need to see the conditions underneath yeah. that are causing you to do this. And these yeah. these conditions that we're talking about right now, if they're not seen for what they are, the hiding comes as like watching TV or movies or yeah. alcoholism. That's why it's yeah. it's so exciting to kind of see what yeah. these conditions are. Yeah, it actually says it in the 12 steps. It says alcohol is not my problem. It says we need to get down to causes and conditions because that was actually, there was a movie we watched the other day. We went and saw Beautiful Boy which was amazing. Oh, maybe it was that movie. It might have been. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was in Beautiful Boy, oh, yeah. and it was about a father-son where the son was an addict and living on the streets, and he was trying to actually control. There was that scene at the yeah. table that was so powerful. He's like, you're trying to control me now. The son and says this. The to the father. Addict. Yeah, son. and he says, you're being controlled by fear, but they both are. He was projecting. It was like, it was amazing. But even in that, he says it when he stood up in front of the meeting, when he said, I was in the hospital and I told someone I was an addict or an alcoholic. And the guy says, no, they told me that was your solution. That, you know, the problem is much deeper. The, he talks about the God-sized hole in him, but it's actually the causes and conditions that are driving me to do that. So, mm. yeah. yeah, my favorite scene in that movie was Jim, not Jim, Steve, Steve Carell. Carell. Steve Carell. The, the whole movie. plays the father, yeah. He's trying to heal his son help him and he doesn't he's not going through any evolution whatsoever until finally in the end of the movie after his son has let him down and betrayed him over and over and over and he gives up he surrenders and his son calls him basically suicidal yeah and um <clears throat> steve carell you can see his voice shaking but he's on the phone he's like no i can't help you no yeah. i can't come get you no i can't send you money and and he hangs up the phone knowing he may never see his son again. Yeah. And my heart just like exploded. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, this is what 
true empathy was. And then he was totally available yeah. for a time a month later when yeah. he did get called to the hospital. Yeah. And, and he it, puts his hand on him. He puts his hand. Time, for the first time, and it was like the actual true empathy. Yeah. yeah. You could feel the real love instead of a yeah. fix. It's just like, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was powerful because in that, at the beginning, there was a scene where they're in the hospital and he's like, why are you doing this? Like, ask him. And the son is just like, I don't know. You know, he does, he's not in touch with the cause and conditions. Like, but why? And there was like a strong need to know and all that. But that one scene was, that blew me away too. And I had shared with you after that. I'd had some of those experiences in 12 steps where I had people that were going to overdose and, you know, call me, hey, can you, can you come help me with certain ones? And there's a point that you get to where it's like where they're not asking for the help or my brother is actually a perfect example because I was 26 and broke my neck and I was drunk when it happened in this and from that point he was like I love you but I just you know I wasn't even really allowed to go to his house maybe for holidays and there was just this he just knew that he couldn't <laughs> that he couldn't save me the only way he could do it was love me and see that look at this is the only mm. way I can support you in it and, mm. and I had a friend that was you know, and in, in 12 Steps, it's a little, you know, different, but it was like, he didn't want to go to the meetings, he didn't want to go to recovery, he just wanted someone to basically complain to at the time, and he was at a beach house, and he was like suicidal, and he was calling me, I went down with another guy, and we sat with him, said, hey, we're going to call the facility, and you ready to go? No, I can't do it, cracks another beer. Okay, well, we're here, if you're ready to go to that, but there wasn't that, uh -huh. that willingness, and then he called me, he's like, listen, I'm out, they're kicking me out of this hotel, and, or the hospital, and I might kill myself. So okay, like I had to do. It. I mean, I didn't say it like that. Was like, then I called my sponsor. I'm like, listen, man, this is tough. Like, because it is. It's. I can only imagine with mm -hmm. a relationship that deep, deep that it's like, yeah, that's a letting go. That's the probably the ultimate of the letting go of control in that mm. that moment. Even what we're all talking about the the control of the yeah direct communication. Yeah, that was a beautiful movie. Yeah, I, I could even put a call out to Ricky's show because, yeah, it was just really amazing actually just to watch that and, and again, that's just willing to expose the conditions underneath and I knew exactly what she's talking about when she was talking about getting up there and having one plan for a show and having to go in another direction and I, I forgot it because I was part of them seeing that movie yesterday, Bohemian Rhapsody, and that movie <clears throat> is really, really powerful because it's the story of Queen, and he, he has this very dramatic life, but underneath it is just this call to be loved. It's just this call yeah. to both extend love and be loved, and there is a moment... <laughs> yeah. that, I'm just a poor boy from... Like all his lyrics, yeah. even under his lyrics. You can see where they a, come from. Yeah, there's a... Well, he went off and he got offered a $4 million deal for C with CBS to make his own stuff. And because of the ego, he basically took it and just got, like Ricky said, he got lonely and lonely and lonelier and more isolated until Holy Spirit sent in his ex-wife and said, we love you, isn't that enough? Mm. And when he could just accept that, you know, probably like with your family or your brother. Like, yeah. No, no, the love is there underneath. That, then he, he went back, his whole life changed, and all those band members were like, equal pay, no one gets credit for the songs, yeah. you know, <clears throat> it's all of us or nothing, it's all, it was just a powerful symbol, yeah. he's like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. He wanted the love yeah. more than anything <clears throat> else. Yeah. So was, that is, that's the fear underneath, and I've shared it on one of my shows where we talk about the ninth step, where you make an amends, and when I had done it a second time, that was actually what was underneath the, like, I'm sorry for this or this, and all the form stuff but it was I'm sorry I didn't allow you to love me as a son or a friend with each person <clears throat> because <coughs> there was such a fear of it <clears throat> maybe that can be my prayer to allow allow everyone to love me you, for tw the next 12 days you're going to meet your parents in New Orleans my brother and, yeah oh <sighs> I think that's, that might be time. So, 
Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Thank Thanks for watching. Surprise guest. And yeah, I'll be on the road next week, so I have to see uh, where I'll be broadcasting from and if Frank will be joining me. And so uh, we'll see you in one week. And I think we'll see Jason shortly. So thank you.